Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on today's video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how easy it is, I mean seriously easy, to create some adorable tea towels for spring and summer for your house or for a gift. So, as you're hopping on, uh, let me know that I'm not just in my craft room talking to myself. Um, let's see, okay, I see somebody watching um feel free to ask questions feel free to sprinkle sprinkle all that good stuff okay so um if you're watching this live then you probably know that i have been in idaho uh moving my youngest son into his first apartment out there um and we were so busy i didn't have a ton of time to go to my favorite thrift stores out there but i did stop at um, a craft warehouse, which is an awesome craft store. And I was specifically looking for their tea towels. So I wanna show you what I got, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do, and then we'll jump right in. Okay, they had, and it's not a national store. It, they do have it in some locations out west. Um, but you guys, look how cute these are. Oh. And then they had great solid colors. And then they also had this great red, which will do some 4th of July stuff with this. So um, take a peek on Amazon and um, enter the search terms gingham tea towels gingham cotton tea towels plaid stripe something and see what you can pull up but this is what we're going to be using today and then probably next week we'll do something with the green for spring okay so what i thought we would do today are two uh, sunflower projects and they involve some adorable stencils from magnoliadiy.com they're super easy to use. They're easy to clean. They're reusable many, 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 many times. Um, and I love, absolutely love working with them. So I'm gonna take the sticker off <laughs> and then I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the right end and on the front and not the back. So this is the little loop that these nice tea towels have and this is the back. So what I'm gonna be working on is the front and um yeah okay aren't these adorable tea towels nancy yeah i totally love them thank you for sprinkling gloria i appreciate that okay so um i want to do sunflowers because they're just a happy flower and then they also have a lot of uh meaning right now in world events um and i have two well, I have three, but I'm, we're going to use two today. Okay, this looks terrible, which is evidence that I love it. I've had this for maybe a year and a half. I've used it a ton. This is a giant sunflower, but it's part of a larger stencil that says, when you can't find the sunshine, be the sunshine. And it also has this adorable bee on it. Okay, these stencils do get a little stained when you use ink, which is what we're gonna be using, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But it's just a stain like on the front of your stencil. So don't be concerned. Um, just remember that you saw my sunflower and it looked terrible, <laughs> but it still works great. So um, I always label the back of the carrier sheet so I know which side to put it back on. And feel free to cut your stencils up by all means. Um, you could use the whole thing together or just parts of it, whatever you would like. So I'm gonna take it off of the carrier sheet. And then I'm kind of trying to figure out what I wanna do. Do I want my sunflower? I think I'm gonna do it, because this sunflower has a bunch of awesome leaves. I think I'm gonna do it so it's just smack dab in the center. And let me see if I can put my camera down just a little bit further and not tip you over. Okay, I think you can see that. 
Okay, so we're gonna be using some Magnolia ink, which on fabric and ceramics, once you heat set it, it's permanent. So it is so awesome um, to work with. And I love to do fabric projects, banners and that kind of thing. I'm sorry, I'm fiddling around with my camera, but I feel like I'm tipping over. <sighs> there we go, okay. So um, I'm just going to use black today. We're going to keep it super simple. We're not doing anything fancy. We're not doing ruffles or anything, but you certainly could, and it would be adorable. This was a project we did about two or three weeks ago, and I showed how to add those ruffles. But this is so cute, just the, the design of the tea towel that we're not going to add anything to it. Oh, somebody's saying she doesn't like cutting a stencil up. You feel sad when you do. Well, you know what, Jacqueline? You don't have to. I just have noticed that sometimes it's a little bit easier to work with a smaller piece of a stencil. But that is personal preference. And you do what you feel comfortable with. Okay, so I have my stencil pushed down. And I'm just going to give my ink a little stir. And I'm gonna put some blobs on here. I don't know if this is enough, too much, but we can take off what we don't use and put it back in the pot. Um, so I'm gonna use a small cut apart squeegee. I'm gonna put my glasses on. And I'm just going to push the ink through the holes on my stencil. I am going to be mindful that I don't keep going over and over and over the same areas because when you do that that's when you have a tendency to make a mistake and I think I'm going to use the smaller squeegee for just a minute right around this edge um, so you just want to get the ink on and then you're going to scrape the excess off Uh, if you keep going over and over and over it, what happens is you can accidentally push too much of your medium through the holes in your stencil and then it looks kind of blurry and messy. Also, I wanted to mention that if the, the border around your stencil is not very big, like right here on the edge of that. So, oh no, I just went out, dang. Anyways, I was just about to tell you that you could use some painter's tape. Uh, we'll have to come up with something to camouflage this little boo-boo. Maybe we'll put a B there or something, I don't know. <laughs> how embarrassing. I'm trying to tell you how not to make a mistake like going outside of the stencil, and that is exactly what I did while I was telling you. That's super embarrassing. <laughs> I've only done stenciling about 10 million times, and I know to be careful, and still I messed that up. And I got it on my hands. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'll show you the boo-boo. Um, I'm just gonna pull my stencil off. And you saw how cruddy it looked when we started. And you're gonna see oh, this such a cute stencil. It's super versatile too. You can do a ton of different things with it. I mean, I have done all kinds of things from t-shirts to tea towels to banners. I'm just looking. Um, all kinds of different things. So. Here's my boo-boo, and here's my stencil. Pick it up and show you. Doesn't that look fabulous? We'll figure out a little something to put off to the side to cover up that boo-boo because when you're working with black ink, it's not gonna just come up easy. So, take a peek. And I'm gonna set this down over here off camera so it can dry and in a couple of hours when it's completely dry or overnight 
I will um, use a hot iron set on cotton, no steam, and I'll just go over uh, the front of the tea towel and the back of the tea towel for three or four minutes and boom, it's washable, it's dryable, totally usable. They're great. So um, I'm working today on my silicone mat that one of my followers sent me, which has become one of my favorite crafting things. Um, and I get questions all the time about it. You can find these on Amazon. They're not expensive. They're called silicone craft mat or silicone baking mat. And um, this one has the blue squares on the back, but I prefer to just use work on this side. And they have a bunch of different colors. And the great thing about this is that nothing sticks to it. Paint, glue sticks, uh, ink, you saw how easy that was to get it up. So um, it's just great. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do this other tea towel that just is a solid yellow. I'll take my sticker off. And oh, here's another question that I get frequently. Do you have to wash your tea towels before you stencil them? The answer is no. You can, if you would like to, but I usually don't. Uh, but I'm kind of an impatient crafter. Um, so let's see what you guys are saying. Oops, sorry for rocking my camera. Oh gosh, I missed a whole bunch of comments, but I will come back as soon as I'm done. Um, Jacqueline Jordan says, put a B on the mistake. I think I will, for sure. Um, okay, so we're going to use another sunflower stencil. And I have two of these, so I'm going to show you the one that I've used the most. Okay, it looks terrible, doesn't it? This is, to me, this is proof that I love this stencil, that I've used it a lot. And I really have, I made the cutest t-shirt with it. Um, so this black stain on the front does not affect how the stencil works. It just looks kind of yucky. Um, but you definitely want to get your stencils straight into some water as soon as you are finished. And because I'm still talking to you guys, um, I can't just rush out to my kitchen and spray it off and clean it and lay it out to dry. So I throw mine in a little tub of water until I can get out to the sink to clean it. But you want to get it in water, especially if you're using ink, right away. Okay, this stencil says... In a field of roses, she is a sunflower. And it's like half of a sunflower and then these words. Super duper cute. But I'm going to use the one, I have two of these. Um, I'm going to use the one that I've cut in half. So this is what it would have looked like. This one's been used a good bit too. It has stains on it, just not as bad as the other one. And we're just going to use the flower part. Okay. So I'm gonna take it off the backing sheet. Oh, and if you're wondering, uh, why didn't Heidi fuzz her stencils? There's two reasons. First, neither one of these stencils are new. They're both well used and well loved. So they really don't need to have the stickiness be diminished a little bit with some fuzz, which is this. Usually, I'll lay my stencil on my, this is called a tacky towel. You can get it from Magnolia DIY. The front is for fuzzing. The inside is for patting your stencils dry after you've cleaned them. Uh, it's under $10. Great. Um, I use it for all kinds of different things. But anyways, uh, so I didn't, st I didn't fuzz this because these are not brand new. And also because it doesn't make a lot of sense to fuzz them on fabric before you're gonna use them on fabric. So, I am gonna pull out some painter's tape because I don't wanna make another boo-boo like I did on the gingham one. Dang it. So these tea towels that I have here, I bought in Idaho at a craft store 
that I always go to when I go to Idaho to see my mom. And it's called Craft or Crafter's Warehouse. Um, I don't think they have any online shopping potential. Um, these tea towels are around $3 or $3.50, which is kind of a lot, but they're such nice quality. Um, so you might just like Google uh, patterned or gingham or plaid cotton tea towels. These are great quality and they wash up great. Okay, so I just did the exact same thing. I put my stencil on and I'm just patting it down. And I'm going to do the same thing with my ink. Just going to take some blobs and put it on there. And then I'm going to use my small squeegee. And I'm just going to push it, the ink, through the holes on my stencil. And because I have this uh, piece of tape here, <laughs> I don't have to worry quite as much that I'm gonna go outside of the lines like I just did. So I'm just getting this all over my stencil, making sure that everything is covered. And then uh, we'll pull off the blobs, the excess, and I put it right back in my pot because I'm frugal. This stuff is not expensive and it goes a long, long ways. But I don't want to waste any of this goodness, so that's what I do. I just put all that back in my little pot, and let me look. I see one spot where it's still on kind of thick. I think I got everything, and I don't. I always check my hands. So first thing I'm going to do is take my tape off. Do that very carefully. And then I'm going to take my stencil off. Which way should we go? Let's go this way. Super duper duper cute. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is so adorable. This is going to be so cute hanging on that little um, handle on my oven for spring and summer. And I usually fold them back like this and uh, I'll heat set it and it'll be just adorable. So I could, I'm gonna lay it over here so I don't mess it up. I could, um, I could add something else to it if I wanted to. Um, if you're going to be working in the right next door area to the new fresh ink that you have on there, you want to kind of let that dry before you go on to the next thing. Because I could add just the word sunflower or, um, from this one, I could add this little B, which it's a big B actually that I might have to use to fix my boo-boo. Um, so that's what I wanted to show you guys today, just how super simple it is. And here's the thing. I know I say this all the time when I'm doing tea towels. Uh, you can never be too rich, too thin, too young. Somebody famous said that or in my opinion, have too many tea towels. So um, tea towels are great for you just to put something happy in your kitchen and have something happy when you're doing dishes and cleaning up. They also make a great little gift. Um, and if you buy an inexpensive tea towel, you have some ink and some stencils, you can whip something up in no time at all, that the person that you give it to is gonna say, oh my goodness, you made that? Really? Seriously, how did you do that? Um, and you can make tons of things. So it's like the stencils and the black ink are a really good 
a staple to have in your crafting stash. All right, let me see if I have any questions. Do I put parchment paper um, over it when I iron? Okay, let's pretend that we're ironing. I'll show you exactly. I have ironing parchment paper in my craft. Oops. I seriously do. And what I would do is I would get my little iron out. Let me show you that because it is awesome. And if you are going to be doing um, ink on fabrics, instead of having to go to wherever you might have a full-size ironing board, it is nice to have this little one. So mine came from Walmart and it has this little hook and I hang it on a command adhesive thing on the inside of my closet when it's not in use. And then when I need to use it, I just pull it out and that's it. It came from Walmart and um, it was probably $15 or something like that. So I am often ironing lace, little bits of fabric, all kinds of things. Uh, so it's good to, for me anyways to have an iron in my crafting area. Okay, so I was just asked a question. Uh, oh, somebody's saying patience is hard. It's hard for me too. Um, somebody was asking me, do I use, let's do it on this one that I've already made so you can actually see. Do I use parchment paper over the top of my project? And my answer is yes, I do. Because um, I don't want to get a whole bunch of gunk on the bottom of my iron. And I, I don't really know that this would melt and go on your iron, but just to be safe. And it protects your tea towel too. So this is a project that I did a while ago. Isn't that adorable? This is a super cute stencil too. In this kitchen, we make messes and memories. So I would just wait until it's thoroughly dry, completely. I'm not even kidding. If you're impatient, <laughs> I don't know, put it somewhere that you can't see it because it's going to take at least two hours. Really, it's better to let it wait overnight. So I would just lay it out on my iron, and then this is just a piece of parchment paper from my kitchen that I use over and over and over. I would just lay it on top of the fabric. My iron would be set to cotton, no steam. Okay, and then you're going to just, this is not turned on but you're just gonna go over and over and over and over and over for two, three, four minutes. Um, you know, these different areas. Don't just lay your iron down because you may end up with a scorch. Um, but I would do the front three minutes, two, three, four minutes, and then I would flip it over and just for good measure to make sure this tea towel is gonna be good for a lot of washes. I would do the very same thing on the back. Two, three, four minutes. If you have an actual heat press, you can use that too, but I don't have one. You don't need one to be able to do these kind of projects. A regular iron works just fine. Some parchment paper, no steam. So that is the whole answer for that. Let's see what other questions. Oh, you know, I was going to try to pin a link. Let me see if I can do that right now. I probably don't still have it. Let's see. Um, I wanted to just give you guys. No. I wanted to give you guys the links to the stencils that I used. Okay, and I'm, as usual... I am quite technically challenged, so I don't have it copied that I could paste it into my comments right now. So what I will do is I'll put it in the first several comments and then if you just say link, I'll give you a link to both of those stencils. I'll give you a link to the black ink 
and I'll give you a link to the little cut apart squeegee so you don't have to go and look through everything on my website to try to find them. So just to make it super easy for you, just say link and I'll get that for you. And if you're watching this on replay, you can say link as well because I keep coming back to my older posts and checking to make sure we don't have any trolls on there and also checking to see if people have questions. So feel free. Oh my goodness, and thank you to everybody who did stars. That is so kind of you. Um, all right, well, I'll get pictures when these are all finished. I will put them here in these comments, and I will also put uh, just pictures of them here at DIY Dreaming. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, if you want to see what I have coming up next, do a this or a this or say something to me in the comments. It could be a question or it could just be something completely silly or nonsensical. You could say abracadabra or supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. It does not matter. Um, but Facebook will see that and say, ah, this person wants to see what Heidi is doing on DIY Dreaming, so we will serve it to her, or him, or them. Um, so if you do a this, a this, comment, and check up here to see if you've liked and followed this page, then chances are pretty good that you'll see me next time. Alrighty, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, everyone.